So Indigenous Allied Health Australia made a, a really easy decision to be involved in the Coalition of Peaks and we were one of the founding 14 members that uh, pushed this up through government. And for us it was really about it's time for change and for the work that we've been doing in our individual and corporate members in our membership, of which there are over 2,000, it was an opportunity to provide their voice, their strategies, their solutions and to hear how we can move forward to make sure our workforce is supported, to make sure there is employment, there is education and training outcomes for our young people, to ensure that we have access to land, culture and language, all of those things that make us well. For me to be involved personally, you know, I do commit a lot of time to our state and national um, coalition of peak bodies. Um, it's important for us to have a voice and be involved in the decision-making uh, process and you know, let government know from a community-controlled grassroots level what is working and what's not and how they can change and do things better and help us to close the gap. Um, you know, it's not our sole responsibility to do it. Government are key partners and important stakeholders in us improving the life and our health and well-being of Aboriginal people around the country. We do so many things on not very much money, not many, not very many resources um, to to support and to work alongside our communities. This is an opportunity to pool our efforts, um, share what we each know um, for for a process that's about our mob fulfilling or extending um, our lives. Our, and our experiences of um, positive, fulfilling lives. I hope the partnership will, will achieve change. I hope it will achieve all of those targets uh, that we've set out in this agreement over 10 years. And I think with um, the commitment, the passion of the Coalition of Peaks and the organisations and their members, I think we will do our ultimate most and best to make sure that, that that's achieved. What we've found in being a member of, of the Coalition of Peaks is um, a, a sense of solidarity. Uh, we, we're joined up in our advocacy. We know more about how issues intersect and we're on the front line together. We um, hold each other in safe spaces and inspire and empower and motivate each other, you know, through the challenges, through the tough times, but uh, we also learn from each other so much. People forget that, you know, for Aboriginal communities, it might be that your focus might be land and culture. It could be drug and alcohol, it could be health services, it could be education, but let's come together and actually provide for a more powerful voice when we're, we're sitting down, with, whether it's with the state government or a Commonwealth government, um, and actually sort of, you know, I suppose negotiating with, the, with these different arms of government from a, from a position of strength. So the more people, more organisations and that, that become members, the more stronger the, the coalition of the peace are. So I think I'd really want the, the Australian community more broadly, as well as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, to know the Coalition of Peaks don't just work for the Coalition of Peaks. And the National Agreement on Closing the Gap is for all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisations can leverage the Closing the Gap framework to create better outcomes for themselves and their communities.